rappers often tell stories, at times embellishing and even flat out making up stuff. I decided to put together a list of some of the more controversial lines in rap songs. Some of these lines caused things like business deals to be lost and some suffered much less of a blowback but still looked upon unfavorably by many. Stuff like horrorcore, which is often made intentionally shocking and not typically brought to mainstream attention, will be left off this list. Otherwise, I could just make this whole video about lyrics by Bizarre from D12, for example. If you have any that come to mind, feel free to leave the lines in the comment section below. Starting off, Jodeci Freestyle. The 2013 Drake track featuring J. Cole drew some heat, especially directed towards J. Cole because of a line in his verse about the developmental disorder, autism. The line in question being, go check the numbers dummy, that's just me getting started, I'm artistic, you niggas autistic. J. Cole and Drake received backlash because of the line and both issued apologies, and when Drake released the song on the compilation album Care Package in August 2019, the line in question was edited out. If you ask me, that line could have stayed, but hey, business is business, right? E-O-E-N-O, -E the Rocco track featuring Future and Rick Ross from the mixtape Gift of Gab 2 released in 2013. This was one of the biggest controversies in rap around the time, all thanks to Rick Ross's verse. The song is all about things you don't know, and apparently Ross did something that wasn't too consensual. He begins his verse with the lines, that nigga sold you that re-rock, you ain't even know it. I die over these Reeboks, you ain't even know it. Put Molly all in her champagne, she ain't even know it. I took her home and enjoyed that, she ain't even know it. I'm sure the reason why it was deemed inappropriate needs no explanation. Ross apologized for the lyrics and stated that he doesn't condone rape, but apparently that wasn't enough. The woman's rights group, Ultraviolet, campaigned against Rick Ross because of the lyrics. He lost his deal with Reebok shortly afterwards, and his verse was dropped from the song. The most messed up thing about it? He started his verse off talking about Reebok, and they still dropped him. Hopefully the next time that he put Molly anywhere, he made sure to ask some questions first. Karate Chop Remix Another track with Future on it, and yet another track from 2013. The Karate Chop Remix was featured as the lead single to Future's second album, Honest. This one had Lil Wayne making quite the vulgar reference to Emmett Till the 14-year-old black teen who was beaten and shot to death by white men in 1955. Wayne starts his verse off with the lines, Pop a lot of pain pills, bout to put rims on my skateboard wheels, yeah, beat that pussy up like Emmett Till. Now I'm okay with some wild lines, really I am, but this one even I agree was a bit tasteless as a young teen lost his life, simply because it was based on an actual event rather than some fictional story. Due to the controversy behind the line, Lil Wayne lost his Mountain Dew deal, Epic Records who Future was signed to issued an apology for the verse, and Lil Wayne also issued an apology as well. Emmett Till's family spoke on the situation, basically saying they just want his name removed from the song, which was done as when the song was officially released on the album the name was gone. Was there no one around Wayne to tell him that it might not be a good idea to keep that line to begin with though? Boss Life the YFN Lucci track released in 2017 and featured on his 2018 mixtape Ray Ray from Summer Hill features Offset from the Migos. On Offset's verse, he has the line, I cannot buy but queers. A simple line that once again people were upset about. Due to the social media backlash, Offset issued an apology and explained that the line wasn't about gay people, but basically about weird people. His then fiance Cardi B came to his defense stating that he has no problems with gay people and that she hasn't even heard of that word before. People do make their own definitions of words at times, but I've always known it to be a synonym for weird or strange as well. So it's a bit of a ridiculous controversy to me, especially compared to some of the other ones on this list. If you're the type to think that was bad though, the next one might be a little bit too much for you. Punk jump up to get beat down. Released as one of the singles from Brand Nubian's second album, In God We Trust, in 1993. This song is all about beating up punks, as the title clearly states. It garnered some controversy due to lines from Sadat X's verse. The lines in particular being, Oh yes, I'm the bad man, and bad men wear black, and if it comes to dropping bombs, yo, I'm with that. Though I can freak, fly, flow, f don't understand their ways, and I ain't down with gays. The line in question is changed in censored versions to 
so I can freak, fly, flow, rip up a party, danced all night and at the end caught a body. Both Sadat X and Lord Jamar would go on later to explain that they weren't referring to homosexuals with the lines, but to soft individuals. Once again, if you're a bit older, you know what the terminology was like back then. Lord Jamar has also said in an interview that they did change the line, but only so they can get airplay for the song, rather than a change in their personal stance on the lyrics. Why? The classic Jadakiss hit single featuring Anthony Hamilton from his second album, Kiss of Death, released in 2004, was controversial for a very different reason than the previous tracks. The track features Jada asking several questions throughout the track, and he starts his second verse with the lines, Why do niggas push pounds in powder? Why did Bush knock down the towers? Why you around them cowards? The line about George Bush is alluding to the theory that George Bush, who was the President of the United States of America at the time, had something to do with the tragic terrorist attack on September 11th, 2001. Due to the line, the song was banned from some radio stations or censored. Good job to Jada for asking the tough questions. This certainly wasn't the only time the Bush family was brought up in rap lyrics though, and this isn't the last 9-11 reference on the list either. Bush Killer The song by Bay Area rapper Paris, known for his political raps and considered to be the Black Panther of hip hop by some, and I'm not talking about the Marvel character. The track was featured on his second album, Sleeping with the Enemy, released in 1992. Throughout the track, Paris refers to himself as P Dog, the Bush Killer, and has lines like, Ratatat goes the gat to his devil face, I hope he think about how he done us when he lay the waste. Remember how I said that George W. Bush was the aim in the previous song? Well at this time his father, George H. W. Bush, was the president, and like father like son I guess you could say. Due to the violent nature of the lyrics, his record label Tommy Boy Records dropped him from the label, as the distributor, Warner Brothers Records refused to release the album, and he released it on his own independent label Scarface Records. We're still not done with the Bush family though, let's keep it moving. We as Americans. Eminem is no stranger to controversy, stemming from his lyrics, so it's no surprise that he would make an appearance on this list. Just like the previous two songs I mentioned, this one also took aim at a president, no pun intended. We As Americans was on the deluxe edition of his fifth album, Encore, released in 2004, just like the Jadakiss album. On his second verse, Eminem has the lines, Fuck money, I don't rap for dead presidents, I'd rather see the president dead, it's never been said, but I set precedents which as you could imagine, wasn't well received by the government, as this led to an investigation by the Secret Service as to whether Eminem was a serious threat to the president at the time, which was George W. Bush. They determined him not to be a threat, however, so he was not arrested. This also wouldn't be the last time Eminem was investigated by the Secret Service either. In 2019, it happened again through the lines he had about then-President Donald Trump on his album Revival. I love you. This song by Dipset was released on their mixtape, Diplomats, Volume 2. On Joel Santana's verse, he has the lines, I worship the late prophet, the great Muhammad, Omir Atta, for his courage behind the wheel of the plane. Reminds me when I was dealing the cane, which is a reference to one of the hijackers behind a September 11th terrorist attack. Clearly, this isn't a line that would go over well with people, especially Dipset, being from New York themselves, and also this song releasing only a year or so after the attack. Jewels defended the lines basically saying that he was speaking purely on the courage the action would take and not glorifying the hijacking itself. However, when the song was officially released on the group's debut album, Diplomatic Immunity, the line was changed to, I worship the late prophet, the great Muhammad Ali, for the words he spoke that sounded like a bee soaked in the me, you fuckers will see. In a Vlad TV interview in 2022, he was asked about the line and stated that he admits how it could be insensitive, but that looking back, it was a dope line. My thoughts on the line are basically the same as his. I can see how it's insensitive, but the idea itself makes perfect sense. It takes a lot of courage to do something that extreme, as horrible of an act as it might be. I understand where he was going with it, but it's another line that probably isn't in the best taste and not at a good time either. Now before we finish up, I just want to remind y'all to click that like button and check the links in the description box below to do things like become a channel member or patron to unlock certain perks 
and follow the channel on other platforms as well. I'm trying to grow the channel in other places and your support is truly appreciated. Now on with the program. No Vaseline. The classic diss track from Ice Cube's second album, Death Certificate. Not only is this one of the best diss tracks there is, it was also controversial for a particular line aimed at the manager of NWA, Jerry Heller. That being, heard you both got the same bank account, dumb nigga, what you thinking about? Get rid of that devil real simple, put a bullet in his temple, cause you can't be the nigga for life crew with a white Jew telling you what to do. These lines were essentially the start of Ice Cube being labeled as anti-Semitic. This song along with Black Korea, which was also controversial, were both omitted from the album when it was released in the UK. My thoughts? Well, yeah, Jerry did break up the crew. Like Cube also said in the song, it's a case of divide and conquer. That's often how they do us as black men in this country especially. But of course, this whole situation between NWA is one that I've talked about previously on the channel. So make sure to check that video out after this for more details. Now that was just 10. If you want to see another list, then let me know in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on these lines and what do you think about censorship? Is it worth possibly lowering your artistic vision or integrity in order to keep a business deal or not offend some people? Answer in the comments below and also let me know what other rap lines you would put on your own list.